Hey, old dogs, I just want to take a moment to welcome a new sponsor to the show, Smart Move. Smart Move is the best way I know to protect yourself from evictions and bad tenants. Smart Move has a special offer just for old dog listeners. Just go to tenantscreening.com, enter code OLDDOG25 at checkout, and you'll get 25% off your next screening. That's tenantscreening.com, enter OLDDOG25 and get 25% off your next screening. This episode of the Old Dogs REI Network is brought to you by Mino Studio. Welcome to the Old Dogs REI Network, where cash flow is king. Real estate investing, the means, so you can enjoy your retirement dreams. This is the show where we cut right to the chase. No sales pitch, no long monologues, just simple how-to real estate investing advice, so you can earn the passive income you need to enjoy your retirement today. And now, your host and chief old dog, Bill Manasero. Old dogs, and welcome to Fun Facts Friday. This is our once a week, only on Friday show. We'll have special episodes not featuring guests where I will share tricks, tips, terminology, and techniques that will help skyrocket you to real estate investing success. Today's topic is why real estate is the best retirement investment. But before I get started, I always like to check in with you guys just to make sure everybody is doing okay. I hope that uh, you guys are moving forward with your real estate to plans, whether you are in the sort of the research side or whether you're already entrenched or whether you are already building your real estate empire. I hope you guys are doing great. And uh, hey, if I can help in any way, just Give me a holler, you know, send me an email and uh, if I can answer any questions, I'd be happy to. Well, uh, let's move on to our topic here. Why real estate is the best retirement investment. Now, if you're like me, you didn't expect to be where you are today, rapidly approaching retirement without a pension or a big enough nest egg. Your 401k or IRA isn't earning what you thought it would. And even though you qualify for Social Security, you realize it might not even be around, let alone make enough or produce enough income to make a difference. Now, I I realize that there are those listening that this is not an issue. Retirement is not a big issue. You've got it covered. Uh, Maybe you're just young in your career and you figure, hey, I I got years to make the millions I need to get a great retirement. Or maybe you're thinking, gosh, you know, I, uh, I'm I'm covered. I've got it. You know, I've got all the the funds that I need. I'm already retired. Uh, Yeah. I got a nice lifestyle. Everything's great. Um, uh, You know, you're, you're all right. Or maybe you're kind of retired and you've got the funds, but you're not really happy with the returns you're getting on your investments. So you're thinking, I don't know if it's going to last the long haul. Well, well, whatever your situation is, you know, one of the reasons I started this podcast in the first place is because of certain things like the United States Census Bureau, who says one out of six senior Americans lives below the poverty line. Can you believe that? I mean, that's the poverty line is determined by the federal government. Okay. To make it even worse, Without their Social Security income, more than half of America's seniors would be living in poverty. Uh, The National Council on Aging paints an equally bleak picture, and they point out that uh, one third of senior households, okay, so one third of senior households either goes into debt to meet their needs each month or has no money left over at the end of the month. Now, I don't know if that's any of the folks that I'm talking to right now. Maybe your situation may not be your situation. But in any case, you know, there's this big bubble called the baby boomers. And that's the group that we really focus this show on. And that group, you know, is facing this reality of moving into the retirement years. Okay, the kids are grown up, they're out of the house. You're thinking, do I downsize? What do I do? Um, You know, is my health good? Is it not? Do I have health issues? Do I have the funds to cover any kind of health emergencies? 
you know, what about, you know, a lot of us are at that age where we're taking care of our parents who are moving into assisted living, for example. And, you know, we're thinking, gee, that's, that's going to be us in a few years. And, and how are we going to cover those expenses or who's going to cover those? Do I want my kids to have to come up with the money to be able to, you know, keep me <laughs> sustained, you know, through those, those, those older years. And so there's, there's a lot of questions that we have, uh, you know, let alone just the one that, Hey, I, you know, I'd like to enjoy my retirement years here. So, you know, my story, I, I know you guys have heard it, uh, me, you know, those that have been listening to the show for a while, you know, was in Haiti, uh, for 12 years before that I, I had, uh, uh, been doing other kinds of ministry work. And then before that, it was like 20 years in business. And so I was in the corporate and the entrepreneurial side and yeah, I had a lot of diverse background, even professional musician for years in that. And, uh, and so I, you know, I'm approaching 60. Um, we're really, you know, weighing out uh, whether or not we we're going to stay in Haiti or whether we're going to go back to the States. Our kids are growing up, they're moving back to the States. Uh, you know, a lot of things were happening and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, if we go back to the States, um, you know, I'm going to have to figure what I'm going to do. Am I going to get a job? Am I going to, you know, stay in ministry? Am I going to uh, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know what. So, and I, so I, we had to kind of figure this out before we, we moved back. And so, and I had some funds set aside from my corporate years and, and, and an IRA. And, and so I, I thought, well, I've got, you know, some, some buffer there, but it's certainly not going to carry us through the long term. And plus I have kids that are still in school. And so there, there are a lot of, a lot of questions and so forth. So, so I really had a look at the whole retirement question and whether or not this was something that I was prepared to do. And so that's, you know, really sort of where my search started. And it really did, it, you know, I looked at the options, you know, my, it's going to be six years old. I'm going to go out there with my resume and try to find work, um, you know, probably not too likely to get anything, you know, I, I mean, you know, coming in that late in, in the game here. Um, now I had started businesses and, and, you know, I knew how to run a business and I was thinking, well, that, I might lean more in that direction. So I started looking at options. I looked at online businesses. I got into this sort of drop ship thing, uh, Amazon to, to eBay type businesses. And, and it actually did pretty good. And we were actually teaching the kids in Haiti the same thing. So some of these kids were making more in their, you know, their, their little online businesses than most people make in Haiti in a year. I mean, they were just making it, you know, in a month's time. It was crazy. And uh, and so I was looking at this, I was going, this could be a, a you know, a, a good possibility. I could go back and get an online business. But um, it, you know, it, it would start off real good. And we were I'd probably make it about a thousand a week. And, um, and it was, you know, it was, it was pretty good. And boom, then I got kicked off of eBay and it wasn't because I did anything wrong. Well, I guess I did according to eBay because we, we were selling a lot of items. The, the, the holidays came and I think frozen Disney's frozen was, was really big at the time. So there's all these toys that kids wanted. They're frozen, you know, tied to the Disney brand. And, and we, you know, had them on our site and people would order them, but then the, the supplier was out of them. And so we had to get back to the person. We gave them their money back, of course, and we apologized and we're trying try to be as nice as we could, but we still got bad reviews. And after you get like three bad reviews on eBay, you're just off. And so that just pretty well destroyed that whole online business thing. So I said, ah, I, this isn't going to work. Got an unexpected, uh, uh, inheritance check and I wanted to invest it. I had my, you know, funds and my, you know, various investments that I was involved in and in my IRA and other things. And I thought, well, maybe I could put it in there, but, um, I didn't really trust the market. And so I actually looked at diversifying and that's where I went into real estate. Uh, I bought a couple of turnkey properties. I researched, found some properties in Memphis and in Atlanta, uh, bought these properties and within a month I was making money. I don't know. And I'm going, this was pretty cool. And so I started thinking this maybe could be where I focus. Maybe I can get like a real estate investing business going. And that's really where, you know, where, where my journey began. And I started looking at it. I, I said, well, you know, let me see, well, can this really sort of fill that income gap in my retirement? I started looking at it. You know, you can start with little or no money. Now I happen to have a big check I started with, but, uh, you know, there, 
there are so many people that do seller financing and a lot of other things. Um, yeah, you know, it also was relatively easy to learn. I mean, I bought houses before I boom, you know, hopped on a plane, flew out of Port au Prince, came back, you know, four or five days later and I had three rental properties. So that was pretty easy. I might get hire property managers to run the properties and these were turnkey properties already. So that was in place. Um, yeah, they, the properties would, would generate monthly income, which is what I was looking to do. And, uh, as rents, you know, went up, I would be able to increase that income. Uh, properties, if I bought them right, they would uh, also accumulate equity. And that equity would allow me to either leverage those properties uh, uh, and I pay, you know, and to move into larger properties and, and, and more properties, um, or I could use that equity, you know, for other investments. Um, also, there are great tax advantages, uh, deductions, uh, mortgage interest, depreciation. Um, I could also, you know, I, uh, some of the nice parts about it too is that I could purchase things through my IRA as a self-directed IRA and I wouldn't have to really worry about the, you know, the, the big income and it could keep going back into the IRA. So there were a lot of great benefits to it. And, uh, you know, finally I thought, gee, if I, if I develop a nice investment portfolio, I could hand that down to my kids as a legacy. And we talked about that in a, in a previous issue, I think just uh, our last, uh, podcast to go a week ago. So, you know, it's not like I have all this great stuff. It's not like the perfect place to go. So I just began educating myself more and more. I read books, listened to podcasts, attended seminars, uh, boot camps. I just, you know, went full on out and I had these three properties already to get started with. I started looking at them. I started looking at the duplexes. I bought two duplexes and I, um, and I saw, wow, this is a great opportunity. I could leverage, um, Gosh, you know, I mean, I'm buying these at the same price as I'm buying single family homes, and yet I'm getting double the rent. Evicting a tenant can be painful and cost as much as 10000 in court and legal fees. The best way to protect yourself from evictions and bad tenants is to screen your tenants. And the best way that I know to screen your tenants is Smart Move. Smart Move is part of TransUnion, a trusted consumer reporting agency with more than four decades of experience. They built an online screening service for independent landlords that delivers critical credit and background reports to you in minutes. It is a valuable tool to help you when you are trying to decide who to put into your rental property, and they can help you find your next great tenant. Only SmartMove has a credit score built specifically for rental screening called Resident Score, which can identify eviction risk 15% better than a traditional score. With the Smart Move report, you'll also get a criminal background check, eviction history report, as well as a full credit report. And only Smart Move has Income Insights, a report enabling you to analyze renter income to determine if further verification is needed. See why 9 out of 10 users recommend Smart Move, and more than 4 million landlords have used Smart Move to make better leasing decisions. Smart Move has a special offer just for old dog listeners. Go to tenantscreening.com, enter code OLDDOG25, and you'll get 25% off your next screening. That's tenantscreening.com. Use code OLDDOG25 at checkout for 25% off your next screening. Smart move. Reduce your risk of non-payment and evictions. So why aren't I buying, you know, four units, five units, eight units? And so I started moving into multifamily. And I, I finally ended up setting a, a little goal. I said, look, if I can get a thousand units that um, I would be able to generate enough income, not only for our retirement and, you know, the needs of our family as we've got seven kids and grandkids and so forth, but also would be able to benefit our nonprofit organization, Child Hope International, that we had founded years before. And, that, and that's where we you know, it's still operating in Haiti. So I thought, you know, this could be great. So, you know, I, I, I started, you know, looking at it more and more and I started looking at the, all of the various options involved. And, and now I know, you know, real estate investing isn't just rental properties. It, it could be all kinds of things. There's fix and flip uh, type of properties. There's wholesaling, there's uh, uh, investing in deeds, trusts or liens, uh, hard money lending, um, it, you know, short term loans to people. I mean, there, it, on and on, there's a lot of different things you can do with real estate investing, getting into commercial property and office buildings and other things. So, 
it, you know, it, it may not be for everybody. You know, you may look at it and say, well, you know, that's that's not really what I want to do, especially rental properties. I don't want to have to deal with tenants. I don't want to have to deal with clogged toilets in the middle of the night, that kind of thing. And so, and and neither did I. And that's where the sort of the appeal is, you know, having that property manager taking care of those things. So, so I, I started to sort of weigh it out and I looked at the various aspects. I said, first off, it's a relatively safe investment. Okay, yeah, I mean, the, the market can go up and down, and that does happen, um, but it's not like a stock market where just, you know, the, the, that investment can totally disappear. I mean, it, it, you know, you basically just got paper when you're talking about investing sometimes in, in various stocks, but to look at, you know, real estate, I mean, that's, that's land, and that's, you know, an improvement on that land, it's a building on that land, and that is always going to have value, tangible value, and uh Generally, you know, in real estate, if it goes down, it does come back up and some, and then it keeps going up and it keeps going up more traditionally they, you know, they will go up over time. And so they've got this, you know, safe element there. You also, you know, it's an easy thing to learn. There's, there's not a lot of complicated aspects to it. And if you know the basics, if you purchased a home, you know a lot about real estate already. Um, the upfront cost can be minimal. You know, I mentioned yeah, you can do things like seller financing, but you can also get something like an FHA loan, which is only 3% down. Or if you're a vet, you can get a 0% loan. Um, there, um, you can also, you know, do creative sort of financing, uh, either seller financing, or you can you know, do things like assigning um, contracts and, and uh, like wholesalers do. We don't actually own the land, at any, I mean, own the property at any given time, but you still benefit by getting a little markup when you sell it to, you know, take it from a buyer, I mean, a seller to a buyer. So um, there's just a lot of different ways. And then even, you can even invest in properties for like $10 on crowdfunding sites. So there there are a lot of different ways to, to invest. And, um, you know, the more I look at it in terms of retirement and the needs that we have in, in our retirement years, the, the better it looks. Um you know, you also the income is steady. You know, it's it's a regular monthly check as long as you're managing it well. That that income is just going to keep going. And if you acquire more properties, the income is going to increase. As you increase rents, that increase is going to increase. And and you you know you you can grow and grow from there and leverage and and buy additional properties. And the tax advantages are amazing. I mean, you you there's all kinds of deductions, depreciation, and um, you know, you can do cost segregation. You can do a lot of different things um, uh, that, uh, you know, that, of course, that you can work with with uh, with, with the tax side of it. Um, you can also, you know, if you're doing this in, in your, your sort of quote unquote retirement years, you can work as little or as much as you want. If you want to do the Tim Ferriss approach and only have a four hour work week, you can do it. If you're just, you know, picking up the phone for those four hours and calling your property managers and making sure they're doing their jobs, that's all you have to do. And then you can go back and, you know, get back in that gondola in uh, Sicily or, or, uh, you know, go down that river in the Amazon forest or whatever it is, you know, you, you can travel, you, or you can visit and hang out with family. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of different options for you. The question is, you know, is it right for you? And you may look at that and, and I'm just laying out my story and sharing some of the advantages that I saw, you know, I, I you know, historically real estate's a good investment it ranges anywhere from 5% to 21% and higher, uh, depending on, on what you do with your, your, your investment dollar. But generally it's a pretty strong, I think conservatives to say 5%, but you know, you have to kind of ask yourself these questions. Do you feel your retirement savings is is adequate for your retirement years? Have you um, have you been are you one of those who saw your pension cut or even eliminated altogether, as so many did during the recession? Um, uh, are your retirement accounts generating the kind of income and the kind of returns that uh, you know you you need to live comfortably? You know, um, or is the fluctuating stock market really caused you to you know, to, to get a little apprehensive about your investments and the returns. So, I mean, 
and, and then there's that big one, which is that big unknown too, is, you know, what do you have the emergency funds? Should there be a serious medical issue that uh, you need to address? And does your, your, your insurance cover it, the insurance that you have in your retirement? Or, do, you know, do you need something more? Um, or, or what about that issue that I talked about earlier, assisted living, you know, which is a huge expense. And so, you know, these are just some of the things that, um, that uh, you know, we look at that we can't really um, can't really nail down. You know, it's it's hard to. Um, I mean, if you answer you know sort of yes to some of those questions there, then you, you know you might want to take a look at it. Is is there a need to sort of generate that consistent cash flow? And I'm not selling anything here. You know, this show. If you've listened to the show, I I am absolutely not selling anything. All I'm doing is trying to hopefully provide a service here that um, can educate people and can provide you with the information that you need to make the decision of what you want to do. Um, you know, I, I know that, you know, from my own experience that there are plenty of opportunities in real estate investing for somebody that is looking for additional cash flow, or maybe they're looking for a good investment, uh, you know, a passive investment that they can get involved in that has a good return. Um, just to kind of recap seven reasons why real estate investing is the best way for seniors to invest their hard-earned money. Uh, number one, an investment property is one purchased strictly for the purpose of generating income. It's neither your current primary resident nor a vacation home used only by your family. An investment property, like an apartment or single resident, is uh, usually purchased with the intention of running it out. Even in today's inflated market, an investor can get a minimum gross return of 5%. But, uh, you know, my time doing this, I've, I've got much higher. Number two, the income from the investment property is partially tax sheltered by depreciation and expenses to get written off against income. You get to keep more of the income from rents than you, than you can from stock market dividends. Number three, an investment property offers more than one opportunity for financial gain. In addition to income and tax savings, there may be appreciation that can result in a sizable profit from when the property is sold or allow you to tap into that uh, equity to acquire more properties. Uh, number four, you can enter the world of property investment with a relatively small amount of almost out of pocket money In real estate. You can use leverage to control more assets. And that's one of the key things, especially as you get into multifamily. But like in the stock market, 30,000 can maybe control 60,000 of stock In real estate. The same 30,000 can control 150,000 or more of real estate. Leverage is important. A small increase in the value over the years can will double um, your equity. So it, it, it does have that, that, that sort of multiplication effect. Number five, you can raise rents over time. You not only increase your income, but the investment property becomes more valuable as the rents go up. Number six, when it comes time to sell your investment property, real estate has a big advantage over the stock market. In the stock market, a long-term gain is taxed at 15 to 20 percent, depending on your income. In real estate, a capital gain is untaxed for the first 500,000. Now, that's a husband and wife each get a 250,000 exemption. Then there are 1031 exchanges in which you can sell a property and buy another of equal or greater value and put off the capital gains taxes indefinitely. So there's some great advantages there where you don't have to give up half of your profit. Um, you know, you're not sort of penalized for success. And number seven, if managing tenants, toilets, and trash doesn't appeal to you, many real estate investors offer opportunities for private investors to participate in their real estate indirectly. So the private investor can either loan money out to the real estate investor. So if you have a little nest egg and you can rent it out at 10, 15 percent, you know, you'll get a nice return from folks being the bank, so to speak. And uh, or you can join other investors and pool your capital through, let's say, a syndication uh, to participate in a larger scale sort of real estate project as a general or limited partner, maybe even a sponsor. So in conclusion, you know, one thing to know about real estate investing is that politicians love real estate. For some reason, they are always finding new ways to benefit investors and make financing available. Some mortgage lenders are encouraged to provide loans with zero to 3% down payments. And I mentioned that a little bit earlier. There's even a program called Section 203K insurance. 
It enables home buyers and homeowners to finance both the purchase or refinancing of a house and the cost of its re rehab through a single mortgage or to finance the rehabilitation of uh, their existing home. Um, and the laws definitely favor real estate. And, and you, uh, you know, I, I think that there are so many things. Now, granted, on, on a local basis and a state-by-state -state basis, there are some areas that are landlord-friendly and some that are not so landlord-friendly. And you need to know that uh, when you're investing. But overall, I think, uh, you know, the federal regs are in favor of the real estate investor. So, you know, this is just some information for you as you're kind of pondering, you know, either approaching the retirement years, maybe in the short term or maybe in the long term, or maybe you're already there and you're thinking, gee, you know, I, I definitely need to make up this gap here and to be able to supplement my income. So I hope that information was helpful to you. Um, Everything here that I talked about, of course, is uh, outlined in our show notes on the Old Dogs website at olddogsreinetwork.com forward slash blog. And you're going to look for the episode that is entitled Why Real Estate is the Best Retirement Investment. So until next time, remember, cash flow is king and real estate investing the means. Thanks again for listening and may God bless. Thank you very much for visiting the Old Dogs REI Network. We would greatly appreciate if you would stop by iTunes and let us know what you think of the show. We would love if you could subscribe to the podcast, give us a five-star rating, and write a review. The more ratings and reviews we receive, the more visible the podcast will be to others. Thank you.